All right, so in this video, we are given a cost function and we are given a demand function. And we're also given that the number of units, which is basically Q has to be greater than or equal to one. And we need to find the, basically the number of units produced to maximize the profit. So if I'm given cost and a demand function, I have to start with my profit function equals to my revenue minus my cost. Now revenue is just price times demand, basically or price times number of units. And the demand function here is the price and the number of units is just Q. So revenue is just Q times my demand function minus my cost function and make sure to put the cost function in a bracket because this negative is going to distribute throughout this. Then I wanna multiply this Q into this bracket. So this is my profit function over here. And now I want to find basically the value of Q that maximizes my profits. That's gonna tell me how many units I'm going to sell to maximize profit. So I'm going to drive this equation. Derivation of negative 1000 is zero and derivation of this is just 10,000 divided by Q. Then I wanna make this equal to zero and solve it. So I'll move this term to the left side. Oops, I forgot to distribute my negative here. So this is a negative, this is a negative. Oops, I don't know why I wrote in this step. When I distribute it here, it's just a negative over there. That's still positive. This is negative, and then this is negative. It's actually positive when it moves over. I'm going to cross multiply the Q to the top over there. I'm going to move these two terms to the left side because it's now quadratic. And I'm going to solve this. I'm just going to use quadratic formula because I don't want to take a lot of time to factor it. I'll put that in my calculator. I get six three two zero two five zero zero. And if I calculate this, my first solution will be two hundred. And my second solution will be 1.25. Now, both these values of Q over here are greater than or equal to one. So I need to test out both of these in my second derivation to prove whether they're maximums or minimums. So let me find my second derivation over here from this equation. So I'll simplify this first. Oops, 10,000 Q to the negative one. So I just brought the Q to the top, made it Q to the negative one. Then I'll find the next derivation here. So this, this is zero, that's just negative 40. And this is gonna be plus 
10,000 q to the negative two. And I can just simplify it a bit. Now I want to put these two points in this second derivative over here. So let's start with the first point, 200. If I sub in 200 into this, I have get negative 40 plus 10,000 over 200 square. And I'll put this in my calculator. I get negative 39.75. So if my second derivation is negative, it means that my function is concave down, which means that this point is a maximum. So basically Q equals to 200 is going to be the X value of the maximum, which is what the question is asking. You need to find the Y value of the maximum. You could always sub this back into the original function and you would actually find the maximum profit, but it doesn't ask us to do it in this one. I'll actually just sub it in and find it just in case that shows up in your test. So max profit, I'm gonna sub in 200 into this original equation over here. I get seven five six zero one six point eight as my max profit. Now we need to still verify this is correct. I also have another critical point here. So I'm gonna first do P double prime of 1.25 over here to figure out whether this is concave up, concave down. So that's negative 40 plus 10,000 over 1.25 squared. And if I put this in my calculator, I get 6360, which is a positive number, which means this is concave up, which means that this is going to be a minimum, not a maximum. So I don't need to worry about this point. It's a minimum. I know that 200, I'm going to have a local maximum. And I guess we can always test a super high number in the original formula. So for example, we can sub, we can find, for example, P of 2000, just to see what this gives us. If I sub in 2000 in the original formula, in my calculator, I will get, a negative value, which is way lower than this maximum profit here. So we know this point Q equals to 200 is definitely going to be the maximum profit because we tested our endpoints basically. And we know that this is a minimum, which is close to the minimum endpoint, which means that that is going to be the maximum profit over here. So the number of units that we want to produce is 200 units.